two screensavers. Thank you for giving me time to get back. I'm Leo Laporte. They just said, keep clapping, the audience. I remember I saw James Brown once. took him 45 minutes. We just kept clapping, you know. The, the soul generals go, do it, do it. Ladies and gentlemen, James Brown. Do it, do it. Ladies and gentlemen, James Brown. For half an hour, 45 minutes. Finally. <laughs> I need a cake. Coming up in this half hour, we got a great show. Linux expert Chris DeBona helps you organize your MP3 library with a free program that is very, very cool. Plus, how do you keep your same email address when you move? Our caller wants to know. Can we help him? I don't know. We'll find out. I do want to remind everyone to register for this week's Screensavers LAN party. Just a couple of days hence, powered by NVIDIA. We're going to be playing Quake 3 again. You do need the commercial version. You do need to apply all the mods because our server requires it. Go to the website to register and download everything you need. Of course, the screensavers.com. Click on Join Our LAN Party. And you must register to play. We'll send you an invitation at the end of the day on Wednesday for those lucky few hundred people who will get to play with us on Thursday. We'll see you there. Now, finally, the moment we've all been waiting for, Patrick and Robert. Robert's had his hands on the Athlon 64 for a while now under non-disclosure. Mm -hmm. We want to find out how good the chip is, guys. So, the fundamental question everyone wants to know, Robert Heron. Is 32-bit computing dead? <laughs> Sorry, I'm having like a bad Heck wrestling no. moment. Heck no, 32-bit computing's not dead. Not and even close. Not even close. Uh, it, it will be eventually, right. one day down the road. We'll all be there, but for the time being, this is the bridge that will get us there. And we just explain what the bridge is. What we're looking yeah. at here is a demo system set out by AMD. This is an Athlon 64-based system. You can see the fancy Athlon 64 logo on the front of there. Inside, in the back, you see the big giant. It's actually not that big, but it's an interesting chip design. We're going to talk about that in a couple seconds. This is seconds. actually the FX model of the new Athlon 64s. What makes, and, and there's a couple different versions of the Athlon 64. Which one did we have in for testing? So the Athlon the FX? The best chip they have right now, the FX model. It's not a cheap chip. No, no. $733 and lots of 1000 puts it a couple hundred, of, well, 150 or 200 above the fastest. And we should say also this is a consumer. This is designed for consumer desktops. Single this processor is, workstation right. environments is really what they're shooting for. People right. who work with one, one box that needs to go really fast. This is not a server chip. You decided to run some gaming benchmarks. No. So. It could have, although it is based on a server chip, which right. we'll get into a little bit. $733. It's a lot of lot of lot of cash. It's a lot of cash. You could, you know, with those systems out there right now, whole systems for under five hundred dollars. It makes you makes you think twice. But let's get right into it. I mean, what are the issues? We, you know, it's an amazing processor. It just it's dense. This is like you were saying, probably the heaviest processor we've ever had our paws on. It is nine hundred and forty pin socket. Half of that chip is memory. Believe really? it or not, it's called L2 cache, and it's built mm -hmm. right onto the chip. You literally, more than half of that chip is dedicated. If you look at an X-ray image of it, you'll see that about half the chip looks like a parking lot, and that parking lot is the the incredible amount of very fast, very low latency memory right. that's built right in on the chip, and that is partially what drives up the cost. It's uh, and when we're talking about that, what's the advantage? It's, I mean, 64 it's it's double 32. It's better, right? And what do you need to actually make a 64-bit processor? We're actually talking about the size of the word. That the pro that the it also addresses some of the limitations we have with 32-bit mm -hmm. te technology right now. Uh, you're limited in terms of how much memory you can use, right. how many instructions are sent in a certain time. Uh, internally, there are some components that are kind of fixed with right. our 32-bit chips we have right now. With 64-bit, it starts opening up those blocks. We can use more memory. We can address larger blocks of memory. So if you commonly work with multi-gigabyte systems uh -huh. for doing anything from, say, rendering film or, or video, video or for whatever you need that for, it, it basically it's moving in the right direction. Of this course. opens the door to having ridiculous amounts of system memory on tap so you don't have to go to the hard drive every couple of seconds. Definitely. Benchmarking this, we, we ran, you ran the beta of, of the 64-bit version of Windows that's not coming out, but there are no 64-bit applications for Windows no. XP. and of the OS beta we had from Microsoft, right. Very few drivers are written for it yet. It's not they, optimized. When, the 64-bit operating system requires new 64-bit drivers. To be Everything ready. has to be recoded for that to take advantage of it properly, right. to get the best-case scenario out of this chip, okay. pure 64-bit environment. Now, that said, we got some numbers to some of our favorite gaming benchmarks running on the 32-bit version Definitely. of Windows. 32-bit 32-bit version of the chip. Unreal 2003. Take a look Boom. at that number at the top. F on 64, FX 51, 194.9 frames per second. Keep in mind, too, this is at a low resolution. Uh -huh. to stress the CPU more than the video card. Got it. At higher resolutions, you'll see a flatlining based on the video card itself. And in most games in general, especially as we move into DirectX 9, mm -hmm. the video cards are flatlining because of the car video cards themselves. The but CPU between power a 20 and 30 percent boost. Yeah, you know, I mean, they, that, that's, that's significant. That's 40 you cannot, frames, right. cannot deny that. That, that is, was unexpected, a little shocking? Definitely. Okay. That's arguably the highest score we've done on a CPU test of this program. 
Is UT 2003 normally memory constrained, or do we depends know depends on the resolution and things like uh -huh. that. The higher higher you go in a resolution, the more it's going to demand of the video right. card itself. So 3D Mark 2003, again, a, a pretty healthy lead, about 200 what, 222 frames per second. Similar mirroring of the previous benchmark, where you just see it's a 232 darn sorry. fast CPU in terms of being able to crunch through numbers. However, in a 32-bit environment, it's not all about the the, the not all about the 64-bit processor. Take a look at the lame encoding. Which is we're converting you know wave files to MP3. Wave file to an MP3. About and three seconds faster than the Apple XP 3200. Comes out on six top. Seconds faster. In a usability standpoint, you wouldn't notice the difference. Right. And finally, on some very uh, unoptimized code, check out is, Nero. This is one What's of my Nero favorite. What's Nero recoding do? Uh, Recode takes an MPEG-2 file, uh -huh. usually a, say a large DVD-sized file, say about eight gigs, and we're squeezing it down to about four and a half. And in this case, smaller numbers are better. Definitely. This is a okay. time calculation, number of seconds in the trans, uh, trans, uh, that occurred during the test itself. Any idea why the 64 is lagging? Is it optimization for the, the Pentium extensions? Or? A couple of things I'm thinking of. One, it requires DirectX 9 to work. Mm -hmm. So how well is DirectX 9 optimized for the new parts? That's something. Or It's also the, the motherboards and just practically every part right. of this is first generation. A little massaging will go into it. We'll see improved scores in various results. Some testing we've done already with the new BIOS for the motherboard uh -huh. shows increased in scores that really? were constrained by some little part here that wasn't well optimized so at the time. So it seems like if you're going to buy this part, you need a lot of money, and you've got to just love to just dance on the bleeding edge. Gaming. Gaming right. is where it's looking. And it's also looking down the future, too. If you are looking to move into a 64-bit environment, mm -hmm. you can do that today with Linux. Linux has several builds that are built and made mm -hmm. for 64 is that a huge segment of the people out there? I don't know. And Chris DeBone is in the back one. Of course, of course. There are people <laughs> who want to. Can I take it home? Can I take it home? For a very, very fast single processor workstation. Would you buy one of these now? If I needed the fastest single processor workstation available, yeah. Are you going to wait until you see the performance numbers for the, the, the Extreme Edition of the Pentium 4? Of course, of yeah. course. And there are also issues, too, with the motherboard itself. It uses, like you showed, that 940 pin design. Right. That's brand spanking new. Well, it's actually used with the Opter Online, too. Mm -hmm. There's server parts. They're going to quickly move on, well, quickly, by next year, right. you'll see a new part that uses one last pin, and we're also curious to see some of the changes. So this could end up being an too. orphaned part. And we're also looking at the most expensive part. They have a part for about $417, the regular 64-bit version. It doesn't. It has a 64-bit memory controller compared to the 128-bit memory controller. That's in the FX. Same, uh, same L2 cache and everything, but it's almost half the price. We and need to see the numbers for that chip. We really did, and funny enough, they did not send us that chip. AMD, send us a chip for testing. We want to see Definitely. how it does. Robert, we want to thank you for coming to the lab. My pleasure. Doing some serious testing for us, Tech TV Lab Analyst. Robert Heron has a monster article up on 64-bit computing. All of our test results are all at thescreensavers.com. A bunch more benchmarks if you're into that kind of thing.